And our company is gravitating to use a lot of their chemicals right now, and we want to get a lot of people drained to learn how to use these chemicals for parking decks, parking structure, waterproofing, leaks, whatever. So the things that we have coming up, the projects we have coming up, we're going to be training on today with a particular line of chemicals, including caulking of the concrete, putting primers down, putting tape over the joints, the primer coat, the base coat. So Floor Seal's been in here this week setting up the demonstration and getting the, some of the steps ahead so that we can move on to the next process. So while we get started with the caulking, we don't have to worry about this stuff to dry to get to the next stage of the presentation. So we appreciate everybody coming today. We appreciate the Floor Seal guys that are here getting some additional training. And for everybody else that's here, thank you for showing up, and we're always looking for guys in the field. So this is Brad and Jim from SECA. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Brad, take over. All right, thank you. Thank you, Bill. And thank all of you. You're giving up a Friday afternoon. You'd probably rather be starting your weekend, right? But we appreciate it very much. This is going to be hopefully very informative. Uh, we hope to learn from you as well. So if there's something we're, we're showing you uh, that you want to add to, uh, you know what we're doing please you got a lot of experience a lot of experience in the room here or if you need us to maybe just go back a little bit you know take a step back so any questions just bring them bring them out bring them forward and and uh, you know we're gonna try to make sure that everyone you know gets their hands on this all right we'll, we'll pass the baton a lot throughout the the afternoon and I understand uh, we have as much time as we need this afternoon uh, we could even go up until 6 if we need to, and then we'll be back tomorrow. Is that right? We'll be back tomorrow morning? Okay. It doesn't do much good to be here today if you're not here tomorrow morning, because you need to learn the entire system. And the reason it's a two-day process is because uh, what we're going to be putting down today needs overnight in order for us to finish what we're doing. So, you know, we've got part of your Saturday we're going to take away from you as well. But, but that, right? It's raining outside. Appreciate it very much. I'm going to put my book down. Uh, everybody has gone ahead and signed in. So the union and who else knows you're here. Is that right? Uh, so we're going to get started. Uh, let's see. What do we got, Bill? Uh, we got primer down. Yeah. So we talked. These boards first get uh, a couple of days ago. Okay. Then we put a primer on. Okay. This, this primer's been on for like five or six hours. Okay. okay. Probably good enough to get a base on. Yeah. And yeah. This back so side. we want them to start with the caulking. Okay. Over here. Okay. So we want you to show them the proper way right. of the different caulking guns. Yep. yep. We have a sausage. We have some two components. Okay. All right. Good. So we can try different caulkings. Great. So uh, why don't we why don't we make our mix area right here? Okay. In front of everyone. That'll be our storage area, and then this will be our hands-on area. So let's grab the 2C bucket, and uh, that's a two-component uh, chemical cure urethane. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar with that product. We also brought along one part, Fast Cure. See your Flex 11FC, Fast Cure. And so we have two different types of sealant. Why? Well, if you have the luxury like we do, of overnight cure, it's usually a good idea to use the two-part materials like the Superflex GC or NS non-SAG or SL self-leveling because then when you come back the next day, you know, you know you've got a, a, a fully cured out sealant and if you're going to cover it with a membrane, I gotta get you, different bits of you don't have to worry that it's not fully cured because it's a chemical cure, it's going to continue to cure. So I usually recommend the two component whenever we're doing waterproofing or we're going to cover the sealant. Because most sealants, most one part sealants, take seven days for full cure. So again, if you have the luxury of an overnight cure or you're going to cover it, I recommend a two seal. Now, we don't always have that luxury. Sometimes we have jobs where we've got a pocket and we've got to cover it right away. And we don't maybe, you know, don't maybe want to want to let uh, 2C cure out long enough for us to cover. And again, I usually say overnight cure. 
but there's cases where if you give 2C long enough time, you can cover it the same day. If any of those things aren't possible, then we recommend you go to the one part 11FC. It's a fast cure, two hours you can cover it. Once it skins over, you can cover it. And so, you know, it's a much easier product to use, right? There's no mixing. You put it in the talking gun, uh, you know, puncture the, the nozzle and, and go. But, uh, you know, again, the, uh, the 2C uh, is a big advantage, so, because it also has improved properties. And, and the 2C has more movement capability, and again, it continues to cure even after it's started. So, again, we've got choices. We've got choices. So we're going to go ahead and demonstrate both. So the 2C, because it's a chemical cure product, the two part requires mixing. And the mixing should be done with a, a you know, pretty robust uh, drill. You know, usually we use like a Milwaukee whole hog or something like this with a, with a half inch drill motor. Because you'll see it's a thick, very thick material. A battery operated drill is not, it's not going to do it. Um, also, it's really important with mixing sealants, with mixing the GC, is that you have a sealant mixing pad. Never mix this sealant product with anything other than a sealant mixing pad. And that's this panel, this product, this mixer right here. It's a weird looking shaped mixing device. You will not, you will not find this at Home Depot or Ace Hardware or Chief Supply. This you've got to go to a specialty waterproofing supply house. We have several in the Bay area. And, and you'll, you'll ask for a sealant mixing pad. I've had a few situations where I get a phone call, the sealant's still gummy and not curey. And this is days later. Brad, what's the problem? So we go back, we look at it, we cut some out, we try to figure out what happened. And it turns out that the wrong mixing pad was used. And it never mixed. And if you try to use like these paint mixers or you use um, a mortar mixer pad, uh, what happens is the material just gets clump, clumps up inside the mixer. It gets trapped. These cage style mixers, it just kind of sits in there. And you think you're mixing it properly and all it's doing is just staying stuck inside the mixer pad. This mixer pad doesn't have a cage. There's no place for it to get stuck. So it's gonna always be you know mixed properly and, and not and not end up uh, a big clump of unmixed material. So again, I really need to reinforce that we use a proper mixing paddle, i.e. a sealant mixing paddle. So having said that about the drill, the mixing paddle, and now the product. Um, in the two C bucket is the B component that's kind of uniquely packaged. It's stuck inside where right? you saw the lid come off. And uh, there's also an A component. And it's separated by this little plastic bladder right here. And uh, I don't know if you noticed the lid came off really easy. You just pull a pin and then a ring that kind of snaps. So no more do you have to go around with a screwdriver, you know, and just like literally spend what seems like eternity opening the pan. Um, so I'm going to need uh, help with this, and I, like I said, you know, go around the room. So we'll start with you on my right. Is that okay? Are you okay? And we'll just right go right on down the line. So don't don't go out of yeah. Go change your spot. So um, yep. Go ahead. Why don't we have you come into the picture here? And you're, he's going to work with you. So we're going to have you open that. We're going to have you dispense that material inside. So be inside the A. And you should probably get some rubber gloves with that. And yes, do, do we have enough rubber gloves to go around? Okay. So we should. Bill, did you think about rubber gloves? No, I usually have some in my truck and I don't. But we should we should make sure who's ever handling these products. Okay, good. That's the longest margin call I have. Uh safety glasses? Uh how about that? Do we have the safety stuff with this? No. Is that the glass? No. I think I've, I've got a pair of mills that I'll do. Back up here. That was probably at last time. Not, not here in the, in the building. Because, yeah, we want to practice, you know. Okay, you've got something. 
practice. So, yeah, we do want to practice every just every month we just picked up here. Safety glasses and glossy glasses. These chemical products are very safe. They're California VOC compliant, but it's also important to be safe. Uh, so go ahead and open that. You've got the, the knife. And uh, you, you open it at the very top. Yep, yeah, you can actually go across the top, all the way across the top. It's, it's not that liquidy. I mean, it's, uh, it's more like a, a gel. So it's a little bit free. So you want to take, get, get a hold of it. And you want to pour it in. And then you want to, you want to squeeze it out. Maybe you need to have, you want to kind of work, work the material from the bottom. So see how he's working the B component into the A component, and it's uh, it's more of a gel like material, and uh, it is important that you get all of it in there. Uh, so you you know you want to really make sure that you start at the bottom and squeeze it out towards the top. And this soft pouch is a is a big advantage because it allows you to be able to compress it and squeeze it out. Yeah. So you think you're 100 percent there? Just lay it flat and make sure that you've got it all out. Does it look like you've got it all out? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we've got the uh, the two products introduced, and we're and we tied a rag on the bucket. This is a good idea. It keeps the bucket from spinning. So stand on that. This it's all plugged in. We're going to have to put it in, and then you're going to turn the material. Uh, you don't really need to go up and down, but you need to make sure it fully mixes. And we typically mix for five minutes. We want to make sure that the bucket actually gets dented. And the more dense, the better we know the mixing. See, it's thick. It's really thick. So you can see why it's important to have a strong motor and a proper mixing plate. Mixing powder. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to put your foot on the other side. Two feet. Two feet on the bucket. One foot here, one foot here, and step on the rack. Yeah, there you go. That will help. <laughs> if you squeeze the bucket, Okay, let's let another guy, let's, so we get more. I want more guys to try Who wants to step up? Keep going. Another minute or two, we'll stop and we'll spray the sides of the bucket. Thank you. 
side of the bucket. So somebody take the margin trowel and go ahead and scrape the, yep, scrape, scrape the side of the bucket because sometimes we'll have material that's not mixed collected around the side. Uh, it's nice if you, if you can get yourself a long blade margin trowel, you know, so that you're not getting your fingers down inside. Um, and, and you're totally scraping the sides of the bucket. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we'll mix another, say, two and a half, three minutes. Once this product is mixed like this, you don't have to really worry too much. You've got four hours. Discoloration. It looks like a uniform color. This particular uh, bucket that you see is what we call pretty pigment. It's got a color already in it by the factory. But this, this product is available in a pig face, and you can add color packs. Little packs of color you can add. So if somebody wanted black or green or whatever, you could add a color pack to the pig face. Right now, we're using the pre pig limestone gray. That's what most of the jobs are, probably 90%. And especially color wouldn't matter because you're going to coat over it with 
drop it to you. So you don't have to see it anyway. So I think we're ready. Uh, go ahead and pull the mixing panel out. And uh, probably should unplug it because we're going to clean the mixing paddle as we pull it out. You're going to scrape all that material off. Now imagine if that was like a jiffy mixer or a mortar mixer or even a paint mixer. You would never be able to get that material off of it. It would be stuck inside. It would be a disaster. Here, very easy to scrape off the excess material. There's no place for it to hide. No place for it to collect. Is that mixer a throwaway after this? Uh, good question, Bill. Uh, no, no, you shouldn't throw this away. This mixer panel probably costs $25 or $30, maybe more. And there's no reason to throw it out. Now, I know time is money, but you know, just as simple as, as this. You just, you know, lay it. Probably should maybe get some piece of paper down here. Might be easier to lay it down. Uh, yeah, against the bucket like that, that's fine. And just scrape it off the paddle. Again, it takes maybe five minutes. And then, uh, you know, because this material won't harden for four hours, a lot of times you'll just stick that in a bucket off to the side and then open up another unit of 2C and then use the same mixing paddle. And you just keep mixing. At the end of the day, before it finally hardens up, that would be your final cleanup. And that's where you would really scrub it up, get some solvent on a rag or a brush, and really scrub it up. But I, you know, I encourage contractors not to throw these things out. There's, they're not plastic throwaway items. They're not like a box of wooden paint brushes that you would throw away. This is a, you know, it's a quality piece of, of tool that, that you should be able to reuse. Yeah, you should solve it. Like as told, you know, in a in a uh, pail with some sand. You've got sand and and, and uh, acetone. You can run it in that, and the sand will kind of clean it, will abrade it. You guys do see that? You see that trick? You know, I like to rub. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right there. I've so, never heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bucket with a little, little bit of sand in the bottom of a bucket with acetone. You stick it in there and spit it. It's a great way to clean epoxies off of any kind of mixing towel. Uh, but this, it's about 80%, 90% clean. The rest of it, you can literally just take a rag and wipe it right off. Um, so we can we can do that between uh, you know steps here. And, uh, Right now, I think you got to clean it up. We can just scrape the shaft there a little bit. And what we'll do, who wants to be next? Who wants to the spread these things up? Yeah, yeah, we're going we're gonna to create a, a joint. So, good idea. Do we want to open up these boards? Pull them over just a little bit. So, we're going we're gonna to duplicate, you know, with the joints in a building project, you know, a slab floor. And then we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna call it. So, who wants to load the gun? Who, who maybe, uh, okay. again, a good idea if you want to put some rubber gloves on, maybe a uh, good idea to put uh, protective eyewear on. Yeah. They have different prices. So, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we're we're gonna gonna a we should have this as Let's do a wall because we have enough material. As soon as we get to the front, I'll have you discuss the This one, too. So now you have discussed all the documents. Oh, that's big. Slide that one down. I had it just right, you guys. You screwed it up. No, no, we didn't have one right here. Oh. <laughs> Okay, you see what we're doing here? We're creating building drugs. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna load this gun and we're gonna, we're gonna start talking. And while he's loading the gun now, you wanna, you wanna demonstrate the, the proper way. Um, you, you, you put the barrel in, you pull the material in the barrel. And, and you just have to go deep enough and follow it down as you, as you pull the material and see how the material starts to drop in the bucket. He's loading the gunner's about 20 ounces of material. And that's quite a bit. Because a standard cartridge will hold 10 ounces. So he's like putting two cartridges in the barrel of this uh, pocket gun. And then you take the, the uh, trowel, the margin trowel, and you scrape the excess off. So there's a few steps involved. But 
Again, the advantage of using the two part is it's kind of up here. And whenever you're going to cover sin, it's a good idea to consider the two part, like I said at the beginning, because it's going to be you here. You'll never have to worry about it here. But we're also going to demonstrate the one part 11 FC. And we might as well get that going too. Do we have a 10 ounce coffee gun? You want to find a 10 ounce hockey gun? We'll talk about that. And we'll go ahead. We have a 10 ounce hockey gun. There should be three hockey guns. That's helpful. Is that in our boxes? Yeah. All right, good. Yeah. Probably around 10 30. So let's uh, let's start a new cartridge. Okay. So while, while we're loading up the two part, bulk dispensing gun. Oh, here they are. There's a bunch of them. We're going to go ahead and uh, talk about the one part. Again, fast cure, 11 SC. So the advantage there is uh, is it's easier to use. you got one part material, uh, no mixing. Um, and uh, all you have to do is just cut the tip to the width that you need to get the joint and then puncture it. You know, very straightforward. Um, again, we, we wanted to show both because there are advantages to both. And, and the other thing, which you know, I won't get too much into, is the properties. The two part materials have higher performing uh, properties. They have greater movement capability. The one part is limited to how much movement capability. So again, that's what we wanted to really train you on both. So here we go. Uh, when you caught the joint, there's a lot of things involved. Number one, the proper uh, cleanliness of the joint. So we're going to assume we've already done all that. We've already uh, ground the surface of the joint, they do be wiped it with a rag, might have some solvent on it just to get rid of the dust. And then the uh, width of the joint is important to know uh, so we can size the, uh, the tip that we're going to use. And then also the depth of the joint is very important. You don't want to go too deep with sealant because if the sealant's too deep, it won't move, it won't uh, flex like it's supposed to. Uh, if you have too deep a joint, we put what we call backer rod. We put backer rod in, and the backer rod is to, to keep the sealant up and not fill the joint too deep. So you're familiar with backer rod? Does everybody know what backer rod is? You know the foam that goes down to the construction joints? Where you want to talk something with, with foam? Yeah. Okay, that backer rod? That's important. Again, too deep a sealant, it's going to be like a big thick plug of rubber. And it's not going to stretch very well. Trying to pull a, a brick of rubber, you guys hear that? Stretch. Not very. Deep. But a rubber band, a rubber band will stretch really easy. So we want to make sure that the sealant depth is typically no more than half inch. So if you've got a really deep joint, stuff back around in there, bring the sealant up so that your depth of sealant is no more than half inch. And, and ideally, we like to see a width and depth ratio of two to one. Get in there, Mark. So too wide for anyone. Not to <laughs> well, we're, this is a good question. How much older? When you're caught to a joint, the sealant and, and how it attaches to that joint is the inside of the joint. We don't really care about the excess on top. We want it to go inside the joint. So once we're done caulking, once we're, once we're uh, gutting the sealant into the joint, you want to come back and you want to tool it. And when you tool a joint, you force it into the sides of the joint. Now normally, on real aesthetic jobs, jobs that you know require the joints to look really nice and pretty, like in the outside of a building, uh, you, you would tape them. So maybe we should do that. We should get some blue tape. Do we have blue tape? And we should demonstrate the proper taping of the joint so that when you gun it and tool it, if there's excess sealant, you don't care because you can back tool it, you can wipe it off, you can pull up the tape. On, on deck jobs like this, where we're going to cover over it with the, with the uh, traffic coating, that's less critical. But nobody wants uh, a messy job. Like no building owner wants a messy job. So we want to make sure that when we tool the sealant, we tool it into the joint. We force it against the sides of the joint. Does that make sense? Which of these ends up being less costly? Yeah. Less cost. Which cost of material to the contract? Okay. Okay. Did you hear the question Bill raised? Which of these two products, one part versus two part, 
is more cost effective. And absolutely the two part. A bucket of two part is less than the equivalent number of single part. And the, the reason is, though that may seem odd because that does have higher performing properties, the reason is packaging. We're giving you one and a half gallons of material in one bucket versus dozens and dozens of these packaging costs. So again, Bill, it's, it's actually to your advantage, even though there may be some labor exhausted in the mixing, you've got one and a half gallons of material that you can use to spread out even in you. Can use. It's unbelievable how, how far you can go with a gallon and a half of a ceiling. So it's 10 ounces. Yeah, this is 10 ounces. Now we do make 20 ounce sausages. We do make 20 ounce sausages, so you can get twice as far. But, you know, again, uh, we want to demonstrate both. There's reasons why you want to use a two part, there's a reason why you want to use one part. And it's important that you're, you're training on both. So see what we're doing here, we're taking these joints. So the, and that's really the right thing to do, is to, is, is to take off the joints so that when you tool it, you don't have to worry if you get my set. Right? So maybe you do this before? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, yeah, usually the sealant is the first thing you do, even before you prime. It's the first thing you do, because it's a messy job, and also because you might have earlier that morning been doing all the grinding gotten you know all this dust everywhere and then you got to clean it all up and then you can go ahead while you clean it all up and get your joints all clean hot and then the next day you can do your say you do your priming or later the same day but yeah this kind of stuff is done first so look do we have tools to tool do we have like little putty knives oh, okay here we go so there's a num number of these uh, available different widths they come in a pack and uh, there you go. And so, uh, you know, Jim selected the one that was right for the width joint. You did typically want the tool to be equivalent to the width joint. Can you go show that from the camera? Show sure. all the different types of sizes. Yeah. Where's it? There we go. So, uh, here we go. We've got uh, literally, what, a dozen? Yeah, uh, eight or so. Yeah. So, everybody can see this. So we've got all these different size uh, tools for tooling the joint. And, and these are inexpensive plastic tools. Professionals get into the more expensive metal uh, tools for tooling. Uh, they're called slickers, they're referred to as slickers. I've even had contractors make their own out of banding metal. Uh, literally, the, the, the metal that is used to band pallets uh, of material, they, they, they say that and they, they grind it and shape it and it becomes a very effective slicker for tooling the ceiling. Um, these are available through our distributors inexpensively and, you know, they're, they're really kind of a throw away is what they are. So we're going to go ahead uh, and gun some one part and we're going to keep gunning these joints, one part two, and, and two part, so everybody has a chance to do that. And then we're going to tool it, okay? And the tooling is so important. You never want to just talk and walk away. The tooling is important because it sets the ceiling against the joint. And it ensures that we're going to get good bond, right? A good adhesion. So uh, we're really uh, not ready to tool until we've done some more sealant. So who wants to be the next person? Who hasn't done anything yet? Okay. So you're going to do the one part. You're going to need to cut that tip to about the width of the joint, maybe a little less. And then you need a wire, a coat hanger, or something to puncture it. It's usually attached to the tool. There might be one over there. How about that blue one? I think the blue one has. Yeah. So you can use that. You can use that blue hockey gun. It has a wire on the bottom. Okay. Now, sometimes, depending on the substrate, we require primers for the ceiling, just like we have a primer for the traffic light. Uh, on most building substrates, our sealants, our secret flex, one and two parts, don't require a primer. Concrete, we don't require a primer, but we have one. Primers are just insurance. If you were to prime the inside of that joint, it would be one of those, oh good, we've got an extra protection, an extra measure uh, to help us bond. But 
uh, on most of the projects you're going to be involved with, which are concrete services, you don't need a primary. Now, on the one job we're going to be doing with floor seal, it happens to be metal. So this one deck, Bill, we're going to be doing is a metal deck, not concrete. That particular type of substrate does require a primer. And it comes in a little pint can called Sequel Flex 260 Metal Primer. And you're literally going to have to uh, take a paintbrush and brush the inside of each joint. Wait an hour, primer says, how long to wait. Always read instructions if you're not familiar with the product. And then you do your pr uh, priming for the caulking. The very beginning, after you prep your joint, you wait an hour, and then that's tack free, and then you go ahead and caulk your one part or two parts. So, concrete, we typically don't need to prime for sealing this, but we do make a primer, so you can't score 29. Metal, we do want you to prime, but maybe 269. Not today, but I think we have oh, plastics, PVC. Sometimes we'll caulk PVC. That's a nice deal. We won't do that to this. So we're using the small 10 ounce caulking uh, gun and cartridge. Most of the time, you're going to use the 20 ounce sausage packs. Uh, but we, we, we don't have any here today. So, But you can see how much slower and how many more times you're going to be adding cartridges when you use the single part, especially the smaller size, versus the two part. Two part, you just load a big barrel, you caulk, go back, load the barrel, caulk, go back, load the barrel, caulk. So we're, we're continuing to caulk. Um, again, this 11SC, we just ran into the color of the We don't care about the color because it's going to get covered over. Yeah. 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 So a little bit about tooling. I'm just having my guitar in your leg. We want to talk a little bit about tooling, okay? There's a, a, a number of ways to go with this. Uh, I'm by the company as a professional caulker, so you've got to bear with me. But you know, the idea of tooling is to force the material against the substrate. That ensures we get a good bond. And that's why we tape. See this excess? You see how we're getting sloppy here? And if this was a building owner's building that was not going to get coated over, he wouldn't be very happy if that's how you left his building. So, you know, why, that's why we tape. Now, professional caulkers, what they call back tool. And uh, so I've set the sealant now with the front tool. I forced it against the uh, sides of the joint. And if we have a spatula or a flat uh, putty knife, I can back tool. And then uh, send me some rags. I need a, a bunch of rags. With sealant, with coffee, and then we'll do a bunch of rags. One minute. One minute. One minute. Okay, and then we have a flat, a flat putty knife. Okay, you can use a margin trowel. But we'll see. So, so I've already front tooled it, and then you know professional caulkers will have have uh, two tools in their hands at all times. Scrape off the tool. You know, just you know, make sure that you've got uh, your sealing properly tooled. Very rarely, right? So you're always working the sealant like this, right? And then you, you want to have a rag. Um, you know, unfortunately, you've got a waste material, and then you want a back tool. See how I'm back tooling? And you know, if you can reuse this, great. If you can't, it just goes to garbage. Yeah, you can just put it back to the bucket. Yeah. And, and you know, professional coffers just do this one time. You know, you just, you just tool it once, 
but we used a lot of a lot of material. I mean, this is you know more than you would normally want to dispense into a drawing. Board. But that's why we're here. We're here to learn, and uh, you get better. You get better the more you do this. You see how that looks much better now? Now, if we had taped this, we just pulled the tape, and you'd have a beautiful looking joint, right? That's after you smoothed it out with the, the first uh, tool, right? Say that again? That's after you would smooth it out with the first tool, right? Yeah, you always want to tool it first and force the material into the joint, and then uh, back tool it to remove the excess. Because once you tool it into the joint, anything that's left above it uh, doesn't matter anymore. It's just excess. So what Jim suggested I do, see, you can tell, I like selling material. So I train my uh, workers to just throw away the excess. <laughs> Jim likes to... I'm thinking of yeah. Bill's P&L. Jim, Jim's, Jim's a corporate guy. I'm a fan guy. Jim's a corporate guy. I'm a fan guy. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, as long as it's not contaminated, you know, if it's full of concrete dust, or something can handle it, no. But if it's, if it's clean material, you can read it. So, yeah, single component in a sausage. Yes. So who's going to keep going? You know what? Do you use that on the side of it? No, no. You just you use the whole, whole tool. Now, you know, these are, you know, these are plastic, and they're not like the professional ones. I mean, you gotta, you gotta think of it with a grain of salt, right? Because, because there's all kinds of shapes and sizes. But for the most part, you know, you basically just want to put moderate pressure so that you're forcing. You want to force the sealant against the, the joint nosing against the the size of the joint. And that angle you know, is kind of important. Now you, you, can, you, know, you can go back. The heat is getting the proper coverage on this side. So technically, yeah, you, you do want to just slightly press and you want that little concave <laughs> look. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you want that hourglass. Yeah, shape. the shape of the ceiling allows it to flex. And that's why you can't. Oh, yeah. so you don't want it to bolt up. Yeah. Well, no. yeah. No. It, you know, it's, it's like, you know, when it's bonded real wide on the sides, and then it's hourglass shape, it, it forces the stress to the middle of the ceiling. So think of a rubber band. You know, the thinner it is, that's where it's going to get the best movement. And you don't want it peeling off the sides. That's why you want the biggest. But having said all that, and the proper profile is an hourglass shape. That's why we use these kind of slickers. When you're doing traffic coatings, you, you don't have to, and it's probably preferred to not have that too much of an hourglass shape because it will telegraph through the coating. Yeah. So what we generally do is is once you set your sealant, um, because you do have to force it into the joint nosing, uh, some oftentimes applicators will come back and flat to it flat tool it because the only well you, you may be you may be yes it just depends on how much of an hourglass you create some of the guys that do this a lot have a technique where they uh, they get that sealant forced against them, the size of the, of the joint but don't create too big of an hourglass uh, because Bill the only thing left once we leave our sealant uh, and, and, and we're ready for the rest of the of the steps. The only other uh, the only other thing we have is the detail code. And the detail code will we'll fill that in. You just have to go thicker on the detail code. And, and then you can go with your base and top, which will demonstrate. But the deeper that hourglass is, the, the more you're gonna have to make up for it with the base code. With the details. Yeah, that's good. But what I'm trying to do is make sure what time wise, yeah. you get it done with a little time. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that we don't have to put that in the right material. Yeah. 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 So if we just do it the traditional way, which is tooling, and then come back and then back tool, and leave that hour flash shape with the flat tool, yeah. You always have two tools in your hand. One to set the, the ceiling against the joint um, sides, and the other is to scrape off the excess. I don't know if you saw. I don't know if you saw how this one might Right, and then and then what we'll do, Bill, is we'll just make up with the detail. We'll just fill that slide in the detail. So this is go in there. It can go in there. Yes, it's a two part. So if you saw how I clocked that one over there, I used a moderate amount of pressure to set the seal without creating too deep of a recess, and then I. In my hand, in my other hand, I have the uh, cartridge trolls that I use to scrape off the excess. So, I assume yeah. this is not satisfactory. No, no. That, that's so guys, remember, this is not satisfactory right here. Before he fixes it. Wait. So we just want to see. See the one I did up there? See how there's no voids, no air bubbles? And, you know, it's pretty much just the way you would like it here. We've got... Um, you know, kind of not enough ceiling, if you will, because we didn't fully fill the joint. And there's, there's a lot of air voids. You see these pockets? Mm -hmm. So um, so it, it is technique. You know, how much you push on the uh, slicker and the angle at which you're, you're, you're pushing on the slicker. And then when you, you know, when you back tool. Uh, also, you know, this one doesn't look like it has enough ceiling. There. So we want to make sure that we're Filling the joint up with a proper amount of seal. So okay. it's good to see the, you know. So if you overfill it and you trowel it down, it goes to the side. Then when you come back with your margin trowel, you can flatten it back. You'll have enough material left over to flatten it out. Well, you, you know, yes, but um, I think uh, we'll, we'll show on the next one here. So the khaki usually never is flat, right? It's a little bit. A little yeah, there's a little bit of a, a concave shape yes. to it. And again, that's just the industry standard so that the sealant has the right profile for movement. Um, and, and when it comes to traffic coatings, um, you, you can make up for that little slope by filling it with the base coat. So let, 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 me, uh, let me do this next one here, I think. Do we have enough sealant in there? Is this the tool yet? Uh, this part of it here. This one's a little water. Okay. Well, and that's part of it too. You know, we need to uh, we need to I got right. We need to pick the right size slick for the joint so that we're not going too deep. But you know, again, the technique is to. Hey, photographer, what's up? Hey, you know. What is the bread? Yeah, I didn't learn any work here today. Darn it. All the time when I see some bread, I remember. <laughs> it's good. See how I, I've got the ceiling laid in there very nicely. Okay. You know, and then hold up that thing. Well, then we want to we want to back to. Yep. We got the right here. So then, you know, we typically. Back to it. It's a little hard on plywood because you've got these uh, knots. So we, we're not using a carrying card Yes. Uh, you know, the text is finding the right 
the right tool for the joint, usually you try to undersize it a little bit. Yeah, this one we got to wait two hours only. Then we just got to skid over the, the, uh, the two part. Typically, we like um, we like overnight too. Uh, now, if you if you have a long enough day, you can start to tap over in maybe about four or five hours. So so you you can theoretically talk in the morning to coat in the afternoon. Do you have a garbage bag over here? How long do you wait for that? Oh, you can, you, can, you can pull the tape right away. Yeah, so I would pull it and we'll see how good it looks. instead of using the conventional means of tooling a joint because they want to minimize that recess. But the trick is, if you're going to do that, then you're still forcing the sealant against the side of the joint so you don't have a failure of your sealant coming apart. But uh, I'm sure there's... Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got a lot more material in the joint. Uh, yeah, possibly. But it's better off to fill it right from the end. Because it's going to be hard to fill it. So these joints we didn't pay, so they're not going to look as nice as the other ones. Yeah. yeah, good question. Good question. Can you go over the seal? Yeah. If it's uh, been there, you know, enough where it's collecting dirt, you want to go solve it, wipe it? You wouldn't have to, like, take it all out and no. start and just go right over it. Urethane bonds to urethane. You can just caulk over the top of it. Yeah, you, no, you're right. Epoxies are rigid. Sealants are flexible. Yeah. You don't want to put rigid on the flexible. So you would, uh, you know, theoretically, put your box in Next Yeah, it's, um, 
Yeah, what does the board, you know, flexes? It's hard. Yeah, it's, uh, see the board, but yeah, normally, uh, you want to go to the Thank you. 
We're going to work on uh, the traffic coding system itself. So we were just discussing here amongst ourselves how to make best use of these two days. And, and since this was already primed out, we're going to go to this area next. And we're going to do our, what we call our detail. And the detail is the same material for the detail as we use for the base. So we're going to go ahead and detail over where we have ceilings with a detail coat and the reinforcement. Um, not always do we use reinforcement, but on this particular project that we're going to be doing, it, 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 it's going to need reinforcement. So we're going to demonstrate what reinforcement is. So we're going to do that. And because it's a detail coat, we don't need a big wide roller. We only need typically a four inch pass. Because all we're dealing is detailing wherever there's sealant, wherever we've repaired cracks, uh, joints. And, and the reason that's important is because we want to adequately cover the sealant. We want to protect the sealant because people are going to walk on this, cars might drive on it. So we want to really make sure we get an extra layer of traffic coating over any of the areas where we have sealant. Okay, and that's why we do it. Do the detail coat with the reinforcement. Um, we're also going to want to prime out the area that we just caught so that tomorrow we can base it. But we're going to give that seal in a little more time to dry. Ideally, the 11FC, the faster, really, they want, we want two hours. But we're not going to wait two hours. We're going to cheat. And the, the, the two part, we probably need more than that for an overnight period. But we're going to cheat, just so we can keep the project moving along. But again, we're going to start here. We're going to do our detail code for the protocols. Seek Elastic 720. We're also going to base out this area so we have something to do tomorrow, so we can top coat tomorrow. Normally, you do the base detail, the detail with the base coat. And you let it at least four hours, or go home and come back. because. We don't want to disturb the reinforcement while it's drying. But we're, again, we're going to cheat a little bit today. We're going to try to demonstrate the base coat and the detail coat on this side that's ready for us all at the same time. But again, in the real world, you detail everything and then go home and come back and do your base coat everywhere. So we're going to have to be careful. After we're done with the detail coat, we're going to have to roll the base coat next to it. Because if we end up pulling over the top of it, we'll pull our, our reinforcement, we'll pull our stream up. We don't want to do that. Does that all make sense? Okay. So detail coat is what's next with that product. Now, this is pretty important. Okay, yeah, and here's our reinforcement. It's a nylon scrim. And we do that just to keep the joint you know, from coming apart. It's, a, it's another measure of, of holding the joints together. So we have one part traffic coatings and we have two part traffic coatings. We're demonstrating the two part because that's what this job that some of you guys are gonna be on consists of. Okay, there's advantages to both. One part, two part. One part, a big advantage is you can dip 
you can roll, you can dip, you can roll, you can put the lid back on the bucket. If you're doing balconies, you're going from one balcony to the other, um, it's great because you can close the bucket and you can go to the next balcony. If you do it on a swing stage, you can ride up and down. Two part, you can't do that. But two part is fast to cure. One part, you need overnight cure. Two part, four hours. So again, you do the detail in the morning, you come back and do the base in the afternoon. You don't have to wait overnight. That's why this job was, was figured. So we got the two part. But, there's a big but. Two parts, they go really fast. So I gotta think about this one a minute because we only have one kit. Well, we don't want to burn one of Bill's, but we've got an extra one for tomorrow. All right, and uh, tomorrow is uh, facing over there, right? Yeah. Yep, because yep. we're gonna prime it. All right, so we are gonna burn two kits no matter what. But I don't want to burn three, so we're gonna do the detail uh, and then we're going to do the base. We're going to kind of do both at the same time. What's the open time? Of what's the mixer? Well, it's it's pretty fast material. See now, what we would do on that job? That's four gallons and one gallon. It's five gallons. So we would break that down into smaller pails, and we'd almost have a, a kit, a broke down kit for each level of that bridge. I think we things to break it down but, but on that job, you may burn a whole kit. I mean, a whole pail per level. I don't know. I have to redo the kits. It's 23 mils. Mill is the thickness. 23 mils, which is, which is 70 square feet a gallon. Do you know how many, remember how many square feet? You have 1,680 square feet. No, square foot of, of the bridge. 3,964 would be here for 45 acres. So 4,500 for all six decks. Right, but when so you look at the gallon, per day, per day. Per day. and each pail, does, well, each gallon is 70 square feet a gallon, so a pail is 35. So yeah, one kit. No, not enough for the job. But you're gonna you're gonna get some some mileage out of one kit. So we so we're gonna need the we're gonna need the batch these down. Okay, we can batch the detail down now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so it's it's a pretty easy, you know, a lot of these kits are designed for big wide open areas, right? It's not it's not hard to burn through five gallons when you're pouring out the front end. But on this demonstration, we're gonna batch it down. So we got we got four and one. Okay, four and one. So if we if we take a gallon of the uh, of the uh, of the egg, gallon gallon of the egg, then we need a fourth of a gallon of the egg. Right? And, uh, gallon, 128, and a fourth of that would be 32, right? Yeah. Yep. So 32 and 128. And, and, uh, 128. Right. So that one, you can get a gallon on that one, right? Yeah. That should be 128. Yeah. And we don't have to burn all these kids. Yeah. Yeah, We'll cut this, we'll bring cut all this, and we'll do it for all of these. It's just a And then we have the other joint. We will. We will when we when we lay out the base. You'll see. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
much. Yeah, a little too so much. So is that too much? No, no, because we'll just roll it into the script. No, go ahead, lay it out. It's better to use the board. It's only, yep, we're gonna otherwise we're going to use more material. We're going to lay another top. Lay it centered as best you can. It's not a Picasso. Hold the end, hold the end of that page. You've got to pull it, pull it. Yeah, pull it. Now, like that. Okay, now, now come back the other way. If he needs more, give him some more. Give him a little more. Not much, just a little. Would it be easier just to have a bucket and dip it yourself and roll? Well, one part you can dip and roll. Here you cannot dip and roll. Two part is too fast. Okay, get going, get going. You gotta be quicker. Get get that roller on that on that strip. Nice. Gotta be fast. Got more rollers. Hey, we got more rollers over there. Okay, now come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Get that scrim going. Get that scrim going. After they do it, the three inch roller, they can't put the foam over it. Uh, well, it just wastes more material. It doesn't burn me. All we really, the minimum we need is four inch. You want to use four inch rollers? That's fine. It's, a, it's the same material as the base coat. The detail coat is the same as the base. The problem is, I don't, when we put the base on, I don't want to see this. Yeah, the spread. Yeah. yeah. So if we, don't, if we don't roll it out a little bit further, yeah. I'm afraid it's going to be a, a uh, lump. Yeah. 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 We're expecting a model of the show. Right. Yeah. 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 Shit going up, man. Yeah. Shit goes up. Yeah. So you're right. You probably put some more. So put, put some more material on this scrim. Fuck it, man. Yeah, you almost have to layer it out, right? Yeah, exactly. So even if it's only material, I really want this to look. Yeah, yeah, more on that end. More on that end. Okay, so we just don't want to, you know, wrinkle it. So, you know, work, work it one direction and then the other. If you wrinkle it, you have to take your gloves out and pull it out. Yeah, now let him do the final with the 12-inch. Just, yeah, pull it. Don't push it, pull it. And does he pull it, can he, can he do it sideways too? Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, you know, just want to hide the edge a little bit. He wants to hide the edge. Okay, put more on top of that. <laughs> Neil's a lot. That's a lot of material. That's a lot of material. <laughs> well, that'll hide the edge. Yeah. Well, maybe the, uh, you know, part of the technique. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for something like this, though, you would want to get some flaps and remove material, right? You wouldn't just want to let it sit like that? Well, yeah, we normally would tape an area yeah, yeah. and then pull up the tape. But, again, the, uh, the base coat material is the same as the detail coat material. Oh, okay. So if you get sloppy, it's still going to be... It's, you know, it's all going to blend in. These ridges are going to show through. Well, we'll see. Yeah, you know, this is a question. Um, you know... Detailing with reinforcement, uh, we've got quite a bit of experience with it. I've, I've not had any complaints, but uh, you know, it may be that when the base coat goes down, just like how you said, just, just like how you said, you know, that detail material. Well, I have, I, that's too little. This is just about right. Or that's too little. If you do that, make sure you just spread it out. Tomorrow when we come back, we'll be doing this, we'll get more training, putting this on top of that primer. So everybody will get a chance to play with this tape. Okay? And we'll, we'll check our calculations on our spread rate.
of how much we get out of each gallon. So, anything else? I'll have to sneak you in the college but I've got to put it away. So you just heard Bill, guys, right? So we're going to move over to an area, like Bill said, that we normally give more time to. So if we start to see a little bit of sealant getting our primer, we're just going to have to be a little careful. Uh, we have to stop talking. Uh, I love it. He's a talking man. Yeah, well, you are. And, and talking, talking, that goes together. Uh, so we're going to do the primer next. And uh, we do burn through that, that gallon. Because we could, uh, we could, we could, we could base out the rest of this if you want. Want to use up the rest of that base? Uh, there maybe? Just blow through it. Go over there in the corner. Just pour it out. So what we're going to do again? If we're cheating here a little bit, guys. While we're getting ready for the primer, we're going to use up the rest of the detail material. So which is also maybe kicked off or yeah, it's good. Oh, okay. Well, if you can scrape it out, we're also going to make this is the same material we use for base coat. 23 mils detail coat, 23 mils base coat. Yeah, dump it all out. Sometimes they just turn the buckets upside down in the bed. Uh, scrape it out. But if we uh, question. No, you would go over. So, uh, Kay, if you did detail, this is detail in the morning. Four hours later, they go over the whole thing. Yeah, we, we don't ever count the detail coat as part of the base. Okay, it's extra. Extra. So, I guess I'm with Bill on this. How do we, I mean, what appearance-wise is it going to be? That's what we're worried about. Well, we're going to find out. You know, the base should level out. And, and you know, you should uh, end up with just the same thing. You know, I mean, the thicknesses will kind of just correct themselves. Okay. You know, as long as we don't have a deck that's like this, right? Right. I mean, you know, we probably should put a level on this purposes, But, you know, within reason, it's going to level out, right? Okay, and then when we put so when we, because when we put the top coat on, then we have another 23 mil on top of that. So then we're at 46. Yeah, so, something close to that. Yes, yes. So you do have one more, one more, you know, breather. Yeah. What do you call it? One more. What do you want? Correction. Correction. What's that? Uh, just leave it. Well, no. I was going to roll that out and just, you know, get get rid of it, right? Maybe I'm being too prudent with the material. But uh, should we have, can we put one of those rollers back on and just roll it out? Just, you know, just really what I was hoping that we had enough base we could do base coat right now. Well, we're going to mix up more. Yeah, we are. That's true. But let's just roll this out. So you can just see, you know, we've got roughly less than a half hour to work with this material. And, and this is also the base coat. We probably, because it's sat in mass, mass is the worst thing. We want to pour stuff out. If we would have poured this out right away, we'd have more time. Yeah. Bill, you've heard of the term hot life, potential open top. Anything that sits in mass, once it is, has what happens to the time yeah, that's just a phenomenon with mixed epoxy. Mixed period. I learned something in my 30 minutes. Well, it's But if you get it out, if you get it out of the bucket, much longer. Much longer. Much longer. Depends on the temperature. Right. Yes. Yes. So I was trying to be smart here. Don't hit, don't hit our detail. So this is a good learning lesson, you know. You don't, you know, if something doesn't look quite right, don't don't do it. You know, the material is starting to set up. We shouldn't have done it. So this is part of learning. You know, we did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's already it's already starting to kick off. Awesome. Is there other
Well, ask uh, Seeker Brad. Where's Seeker Brad? Okay. He's got baseball cleats. Are you okay with them using baseball cleats? What do they look like? They're, they're steel. Yeah, they're steel bottles, steel slit ones. Okay. The reason we use cleats, oh, yeah, that, that would be fine. The reason we use cleats, and it's hard to find golf shoes, right? They don't sell golf shoes with uh, cleats. Um, it's, 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 no spice. it's because we don't want to mess up our work, right? we got to walk in, right? So, uh, uh, a lot of times, so you can maybe, maybe work. Yeah, I don't know. Face coat, you might be able to work around it. I don't know. But you can stand it. You can stand it. So, you can switch it in the back row. Right. So yeah, and the other thing with with base, not detail, but with base is we, we pour it, we squeegee it, and we back roll. So we need three guys: a pour, four guys, a mixer, a pour, a squeegee, and a back roll. Four guys. We need, but we need whoever's on that on the white deck. You really want cleats, spikes. You don't want those nice shoes, get it really good. It. You can mix though. You can mix. It's pretty easy to mix. <laughs> okay, so we need the, uh, do you get an excerpt in the Milwaukee? Thank you. 